name is Crafty Jojo and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and um, today I want to show you how I created this uh, cute little box. It's actually my golden shrine and um, it features uh, three trays that open up like boxes and it's rich in uh, uh, golden embellishments. It features um, bronze metal uh, corner legs and it's a quite sturdy box and it's very easy to make so I'm going to show you how I did this. I've prepped a bit beforehand, so we are not going to lose too much time. You need three pieces of cardstock in any color. Today I'm going to make a black and blue one. So this measures 12 by 12 inches and you need to score it. And the scoring is as simple as can be. You need to score for this um, box. You score at, can you see it? Yes. Score at three quarters. Oops. This is slipping here. I need to put this sideways. You can see it's three quarters. And at one and three quarters, you're going to score. And at two and a half. And at three and a half. And you repeat this on all four sides. So again, three quarters. then one and three quarters, then two and a half, and then three and a half. And again, three quarters, Oops. and one and three quarters, two and a half, I'm going to turn this round. This is really bad. Two and a half. Untidy scoring here. Three and a half. And you turn it around. And last bit. Three quarters. Next one is one and three quarters. Next one is two and a half. And then the last one is three and a half. And now you've scored all four sides and you need to put um, a last score line in which is at four and a quarter and you only score down to the second horizontal score line. So at four and a quarter you only go down to the second score line on all four sides like so. At four and a quarter only down to the second score line and that's your scoring done and you need to repeat this on all your three bits of cardstock and then you need to cut it and in order to cut it I'm going to show you exactly I'm going to turn it upside down um, to show you the cutting line you are going to score down on the short score line you just did like straight down then you are going to cut diagonally to this score line you cut one down and then you cut this bit and all this has to come out again so you are going to cut on that bit here oops sorry straight down to the second score line you di cut diagonally one down and then straight all the way and all this comes off and again you're going to score down here you're going to cut here you're going one down and then horizontally okay so this is what you're going to cut on your piece of cardstock on all three boxes or trays or however you want to call it shadow boxes and I'm going to cut this and come back to you so I've cut my bit and this is what you should have at this point and uh, the next thing to do is to apply your tape and um, the this is the side that I've scored on, so I turn it, because this is going to be the inside of my box. Oops, got some marks on here. And you have to apply a bit of double-sided sticky tape to the diagonal bit here on all four sides. So this is how I do it. I use a knife and I cut down like so. And I'm going to apply it here as well. And here, there we go, and then the last bit here, and 
this is the inside of your box and then back to the outside where we have scored and I'm going to apply and this is my score line here so do not apply to the edge apply close to the score line so really not on it but below it closely below it you try to apply your tape and we do it on all four sides like so okay one two three and the last side and then you have to do this on all of your three boxes apparently but i've already prepped two so i'm only showing you one but you need to repeat this process three times of course so that's what you have and now it's ready uh, to burnish and fold oops sorry for that so we are going to turn it up and upside down and then we start burnishing inwards on all our score lines make them really crisp like so because you want your box to have really crisp corners so make sure all your score lines are crisp and then we can already put this together And you always start putting it together by peeling off one side here, just one, and this one here, okay? So peel this off. And now watch what I do. I fold this over and lay this flat. Make sure you don't glue this on here. And then if you push it up, it becomes the border now you turn it to the opposing side do not carry on here or here you have to do the opposite side first so you are going to peel off here just this bit and this bit and you fold it over and it comes up like so now you carry on with one of the sides doesn't matter which one you take but before you can put this side in, the, side, the opposing sides need to be in place. This doesn't want to come off. And this goes like so. Come on. So you push this in here, flat. And then when you bring it up, I'm pushing this to the side and then slide it under make sure that this corner meets really line it nicely up and then I can press down here and I'm doing exactly the same here but actually it falls in place automatically so you have nice neat corners now because the box I'm going to do is going to have um, instead of the vinyl stickers that I used in my shrine I'm going to use a blue Miri cardstock that I have embossed so at this point you actually can slide your mirror card stock in like so and I'm going to do this by using wet glue and your mirror card stock measures three and a half by three and a half so you could put in designer paper you could uh, put in the mirror card stock or just like stickers like I did in the shrine you can basically um, do anything you like or you can leave it like blank do nothing with it but I'm just putting that in with some wet glue and I'm closing my last bit and then my centerpiece is in place and I have I'm going to show you the embossing folder that I've used because it's so again to put this one you push this over push it push the corner in until it's closed up nicely and then I press down here and exactly the same on this side and that's your box assembled so uh, no rocket science really easy to do and I have already done three of them this is some um, die cut stuff because the flower decorations are on, on top are going to be in um, blue as well so I've created 
two boxes that are exactly similar and the third one has different mirror cardstock and also I have glued to the bottom of this one a panel of the blue um, holographic mirror cardstock because um, the plan is to make this the middle part so this is how my um, shrine or my box is going to get together so when I open this I look at this plain blue and that one and if I open up here I will have the same um, just vice versa so this is the plan and uh, if you've come this far what you need to do next is take a piece of black cardstock and you use this um, punch which is um, the decorative label punch if you haven't got this you can also just cut a piece of cardstock um, uh, roughly to uh, these measurements because I'm going to use this to make the hinges from it so there is no problem if you haven't got exactly this punch there are similar punches or in the worst case scenario you just cut a square piece of cardstock it's going to be covered up with the side panels mostly anyway so as you can see you hardly can see the hinge anymore because it's covered by the gold here and it's going to be covered by blue strips anyway so whatever you have got you can use it no problem so here is my black cardstock and i'm going to punch out four because i need two for both hinges so here we go that's already done next thing to do is score the middle you can pop it in your punch board uh, the, uh, sorry not punch board in your scoreboard or just do it like i do and this is why i prefer this label because it actually helps it it exactly shows you where the middle is which i love and then i'm just going to make a crisp fold that's my hinge so I'm going to do four of them and then I'm going to glue them in place with wet glue come on when you want to do things fast it doesn't work fast just aiming forever here. Okay. Oops. All right. So this is what we've got. Hinges are ready to be glued in place. And I'm actually, because I, don't, I want to avoid my hinges to move and shift and then have a dodgy closure so I'm using a strip of rubber band that I got with um, some of my stamp sets sometimes the stamp set consists of two so there's a nice strong rubber band and I'm just going to um, double check I got my right order and I'm just going to pop my rubber band on this Make sure it's nice and flat everywhere. Align my boxes, my trays. And then you are going to put two of your hinges to the bottom side here. And the other two hinges go to the top side, so they go here. So this is all I do. Use wet glue. Wait a minute, I have to arrange this more nicely. And then I am going to just add glue to it. And then you just want to pop your hinge on your box, like so. Do the second one and I'm going to not only leave it to the rubber band, this one I'm going to hold in place personally, so to say. And so I'm going to turn the camera off till this has set because I'm not going to record all this holding time. But basically that is how you put the hinges in place. And I'm going to hold it like this now, carefully pressing all the time against it to make sure it really adheres nice and flat. So these are now adhered nice 
lastly and I'm going to because they are doing the two bottom ones so to put in the next ones it's going to be here and we're doing going to do exactly the same pop my two um, hinges on here and hold them in place until they're glued down and then we can carry on decorating the box and I'm going to show you how I put the legs on so again I'm going to hold this in place to make sure it sets where I want it so that the box is not like a bit wonky I want it to have a really nice square close closure so when it's not held in place it still needs to be a square so this is basically the second set of hinges that I'm going to hold in place and then I'll come back to you right my hinges are in place as you can see they are doing here and on the opposing side the bottom ones and the other side is the two top ones so it's going to like open up zigzag shape and this can be set away um, for the for the minute and we have to look at the decorative strips well you would need to cut these strips and they all measure you need to do 12 because apparently you've got one two three by four so that's 12 of them that you need to cut and they measure uh tari tati, four and a quarter no sorry um they measure four three quarters by three quarters so four three quarters by three quarters and you need to do 12 and i actually am embossed them again with my new favorite sizzix embossing folder it's not from stampin up but it's some sort of garden trellis like um folder so you find similar ones or maybe you have got them because this was a freebie in one of the british craft magazines so you might have it even um but you can basically emboss it with any design you like so i place five strips in it run it through my machine i did exactly the same with my panels that are inside my boxes now and we need to decorate the outside of our box with these strips so you have to glue them down all 12 and that's why i said it doesn't matter um the hinges are going to be covered up mostly by your metal strips anyway but this is what the box is going to look like but we need to glue these in place before you can add the metal feet corners or corner feet however you call that so this is how they go on and on all four sides and i'm going to do this off camera again and then get back to you once this is i was going to say glue and then my camera passed out so um this is what my box looks like after these strips have been put in and the inside um, opens up like so. So this is my um, top set and this is the bottom one and it opens up nicely and it's time to glue in the corner feet. So turn it upside down because this is the bottom. Make sure you don't get mixed up with that. And I've got these, I buy these on actually AliExpress in China. I usually buy them in bulk but um, I think I've only got one or two pair left or sets left it's not a pair it's four so it's a set but um, they are lovely and you can have them in all sorts of variations and this is how they go on so you are going to glue them on to each corner and I'm going to use a different glue this time gluing this on is um, very easy with glossy accents so I'm going to use my glossy accents and I'm putting any I'm not putting anything anywhere because it's clogged up again all right so because you can't you can if you would use them on wood you could screw them in that's why they've got these holes but apparently you can't do that on it's clogging up clogging up clogging up sorry for that next attempt okay coming now a bit too much so basically you have to put them on upside down like so and then i hold them in place for a few seconds and glue all my four feet to my corners So these are my four corner feet in place and this stands up my box nicely 
and makes it also very sturdy because they add some weight to it. So bottom tray, top tray and what's left to do is the decoration at the top and I need to introduce you to this. This is the Botanical Blooms bundle, um, Botanical Garden die cut set that I used. It is retired. Many of you will have it because it was very popular. Those who haven't got it, any other flowers will do as well. Um, for example, a very similar one is the one from Sizzix, the Sizzix Sinlids number 661097. Um, any other name for it? No. Um, they produce very similar flowers, very nice as well. So you can use that one if you haven't got the Stampin' Up! one. If you haven't got the Stampin' Up! one, you can also buy it in my shop. The link, as you know, is on my blog below the post where I'm going to post all the measurements again. So I've basically used all of them except this one. And I've created, I've already pre-cut them, so there's loads here. Need to get it all on. So I first start my layout with the leaves so this is the idea of it so I have two main leaves one was going here um, I usually put it on like I lay it out on my box before I glue it down so this can actually point to here I'm happy there this can point to here or maybe not so symmetrical, you know, this is just like, maybe like so. I'm happy with that. Got one here. Got one like so. So it's all, it's all about arranging it. And once I've arranged those, I'm going to make the effort and glue it down. with uh, glossy accents by the way again so I'm um, probably going to do something like this I just want to make sure that it doesn't look empty you know and it's never going to be exactly the same one everybody's going to arrange it individually so um, all I'm using is I pick them up individually glue them down Like so, just pop it on. You don't need much glue. This one is a bit trickier because of its thin properties is very very thin and fragile but still okay this one is on top of that one so I'm going to glue this one in first then that one Ooh, oops That was a bit too much, but well, never mind. If you don't press it down. Okay, and this one. Oh no! Well, that's the statement now. It has to go down here. Alright. And then I've already prepped all my flowers, so to save some time, I've rounded them with a ball tool, shaped them a bit, and now it's random, basically. Random gluing on. So here we go, I'll start with the big ones, because I want one here. And the second big one, maybe, yes, because I want one there. Mm. 
Do 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 do. I can't make up my mind. So as you can see, it's random placement. Wherever you fancy it, just pop it down. And if there are some gaps left after you've finished, use some embellishments like rhinestones or whatever you get your hands on and fill the gaps. Like I'm going to fill this gap here with this. I'm going to move this a bit and I move these a bit. So. Actually, I want to place this somewhere on top of here, so I'm going to move this to the side. And I'm going to use a dimensional for this one, because I need it elevated. So there you go. And this then will sit on top of those. There we go. So this is my arrangement. And um, I'm now, normally I would use the silver rhinestones or something. But the feet on my box are bronze, like more golden colorish. So I am going You know, I could go for the silver ones, which I prefer, but actually the golden ones, I'm not sure now, can't make up my mind. The golden ones pick up the color scheme of the bronze, but I think I'm going for the silver ones. I'm going to put some silver ones on, never mind. Oh dear, that just fell off like that. No glue on it. Actually, a few missing. Hmm. All right, that one has moved to there, no glue on it. So basically you can pop in a few of these. No glue, they don't glue. Oh no, what's happening here? Also, the glue doesn't come off. Are you also struggling with these? I have to use my glossy accents to put these on. The glue stays on the paper, which is not ideal. Also, no glue. Just randomly fill spaces. Use different sizes to make it more interesting. Again, no glue. You can pop them in the middle here as well. Come off without the glue. I'm going to ring up Stampin' Up and let them know about this. Hmm. So I think this is enough, otherwise it's getting too busy with accents. So basically this is my treasure chest or my shrine finished. So this opens to this side like so. This opens to that side, like so. And this is the finished box. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. It's very easy to make. It's just a bit of cutting and a lot of gluing down. The die cutting um, uh, is also going to take some time, but uh, it basically takes you like, if you work continuously, it took me 40 minutes to make one. All right. I hope you have enjoyed this little tutorial and thank you very much for watching it. And there is a... Um, subscription button in the corner there if you haven't pressed it please be so kind and press it and follow me 
Um, in the description box of this video, you also find the link to my blog where I'm going to put up all the measurements and the score lines again so you can look it up so you don't have to follow um, the tutorial and uh, wait till I announce them and on top of it all sometimes it happens that I misspeak them so always refer to my blog for measurements because the ones on my blog are 100% correct. Thanks for watching and have a nice week and happy crafting. Bye!